All right, so here's a picture that I created just to kind of give an overview of what we're trying to do here. Um, so this is the Tango 2, and the best part about that is it has the transmitter built in. It also has a version of software um, which they call Freedom TX, which is a branch of OpenTX. Um, and then you have essentially the storage inside, which is the SD card. So the three things we're trying to update are the firmware, which is sort of the, I guess, like the operating system of the controller, the storage, so all the files on there, uh, and then the transmitter. And obviously, if we're updating the storage and we're going to a new version, we need to save and back up the ones from the old um, sort of the controller and bring those settings forward so we don't have to set it up from scratch each time. So uh, the steps will tell us which files we need. So it's going to be the, the, the models in there and it's going to be some other files to do with the, um, the settings that, where the controller saves its settings. Um, and then the transmitter, we update that as a separate step, um, just like we would if it was an external transmitter. But because the firmware of the controller and the sort of transmitter go sort of hand in hand because it's built in uh, we usually do the controller first and then the transmitter second you probably find in the future um, there'll be less frequent updates for the controller software and more updates just to the transmitter so you may not need to do both steps you could just go straight to the transmitter uh, in this particular case we're going to be doing the both so we're going to do this the firmware uh, make sure we're doing the storage and the transmitter if you forget to do the storage section, um, the worst case scenario is you lose your settings and you'll get a warning um, potentially saying you have the wrong version for uh, the firmware required. So if the um, SD card doesn't match what the controller expects, you'll get a warning. And um, if you lose your settings, then unfortunately you'll need to either back them up again from um, or set up the controller as if you bought it new, basically. So it's not the end of the world, but um, it's not a fun step, not a fun process to go through if you don't need to. So the first part I need to do is just to quickly uh, check which current version of um, OpenTX or FreedomTX is actually on the controller. So the version of the controller itself. So the radio is already on. I'm going to long and hold press the menu button and then press the page button to tab through to the version page. You can see there this one is currently on TBS 1.1.1, which means I don't need to upgrade uh, the SD card contents. However, um, I will go through it later anyway. For, for this one, that's how you get the version of the Tango 2. So TBS has created this little um, sort of flowchart, um, and I'll just go through it quickly. Obviously, the two major steps are updating the firmware of the controller, uh, which includes the SD card if you haven't got the right version yet. Um, so 1.0.x, we need to do the SD card. If we've already got 1.1.x, we can just do the firmware of the controller. Um, and then we want to do the Crossfire module, which is installed inside it. So we're going to be going through everything, um, back up the SD card, um, update the SD card, and then restore our settings to the SD card, and then update the firmware, and then update the transmitter. The other thing that they have given us here on the left-hand side is uh, the details um, of which files we actually need to restore back to the SD card. So that's pretty important. So we need to turn the controller on. Let me plug in the USB drive, sorry, cable, and we choose USB storage. And then on our computer, we should hopefully get that to pop up as a drive. All right, so there's actually the um, internal one for the firmware, we ignore that one. This is the one we want. And we only need to get specific files. However, just for doing things the right way, I'm going to take a backup of all of it by copying it, going to the folder that I've created here called old SD and pasting it in there. Looks like it's about 140 megabytes and using my computer at the moment, it's not going very fast, but we'll just speed up this process. While it's copying, I'll just come and make sure I've got the latest version of the SD card. So here it says that's for version 1.0. We want 1.1, so we'll download this one here. How that is going at half a megasecond, I can only assume it's because of the internal SD card. It's crazy slow. Okay, while that's downloading, we've got the uh, new SD files here. So I'm just going to cut that over and paste it into my 
folder I've got here. Open it up. Got the new SD card here. And just to have it ready to go, I'm just going to extract all this out into this folder. Okay. So we've got the all the old ones backed up there. We have the new one to go in here. And obviously, uh, what we would need to do then is copy the new one based on the steps here. Let's close that. So we've got back up your SD card, update this vCard contents to v1.1. So that'd be taking the new one that we got from that zip file and copying it over to the radio here. Now, because I've already done this, I don't need to do this step, but I'm doing it anyway. Just to see how long it takes and just to go through the process and record it. Seeing it's saying there's a lot of files here that are um, the same names, so we say replace. Now while that's copying, I'm going to look at the instructions here and look at the files that I'm going to need to copy over, just to see where they are. So we've got the old SD card. Under the Crossfire folder, we have the eeprom.bin file. So we're going to need to get that one. Under the radio, we have the models.txt and the radio.bin file. No. Yep, those two files. That's right. And then the most important one probably, or one of the most important ones, is under the models folder. So this will be different depending on how many models you've got. Um, you copy all of those over. There's one final note here. It says the Crossfire um, OTA. I can assume that means over the air update. OTA folder here. And if you plan to update the Tango 2 uh, Crossfire, don't back up this folder. That's what it says. So I can assume these are the firmwares that it must push out to the, um, the uh, receivers. So for the moment, we can probably ignore those because we do plan to upgrade our uh, Tango 2 Crossfire. So it will probably have a new bin file. And when we bind to our um, receivers, we should be pushing out that new uh, file. So we don't need this here. That's just my educated guess anyway. It does say here there's an important note. Uh, during the firmware updates via the agent, make sure all the steps, all the checkboxes are done. You don't want it to be half done or not finished because it might end up in a, a bricked state, I'm assuming. So uh, we need to be patient, make sure all of those um, are finished. All right, I'll make sure that I just wait for uh, this to finish copying before I copy the parts of this old SD card that I need to bring over to the controller up here. So we're currently going through the update SD card. Next, we're going to restore the backup files to the SD card. Because of these are particular files that you may want to keep on hand, I guess, um, not rely on, but keep on hand, I might actually go and grab those particular files out and have them ready, um, sort of in a root folder ready to go. And I might even save them onto my Dropbox folder just for safekeeping. And the way I'll do that is if I go back to uh, what I can do here is create a Django to um, save files. I call it save files. I want to do is here I'll open this one up and I have this over here save files and what I'll do is I'll grab the folders that it needs and I'll have them ready to go here so go to the old SD card we're going to need the crossfire folder and inside the crossfire folder we're going to just need the EEP ROM file so I'm just going to copy the crossfile file over folder over Go in there and delete everything except for the. Okay. The next one I'm going to need is the radio folder. And in that particular case, I need both of them. So I'm going to copy that one over as is. And finally, the models folder and everything inside that.
And we've already described we don't need the um, Crossfire OTA folder, which we saw before here. It's in there, so we don't need that. And we already deleted it, so it's fine. So just going through and checking, we have one, two, three, and then all the models. So we have one, two, three, and then all the models. So now when this copy is done, all we're going to need to do is actually copy these three into the controller up here. It's like restoring our settings, I guess you could say. Okay, and that's done. So we can now copy these files back over here. You can do it one at a time if you like. If you're not comfortable doing it this way, just do it one at a time. Um, say yes, please. And that's restored all of our stuff to the controller. So now we're going to actually upgrade, update the thing, the controller via the TBS agent. Now, if we bring up the TBS agent right now, so you notice the green lights aren't on here, up here where the micro TX is, um, whereas the Tango 2, there's no green lights on at all. Um, there's the Tango 2 down the bottom, so no, no green light there, no green light there. And that's because we've still got the Tango in storage mode. So what you need to do is you need to disconnect it. And then plug it back in. And just press exit at this point. Don't You don't need to pick one of those. So just press the exit button on the controller. And now you notice that hopefully in our TBS agent, we get the green lights where we have the Tango 2 and the Tango 2 Crossfire built in. And we're going to do it in the order of the Tango 2 first, then the Crossfire which you'll notice in the uh, TBS settings here, we got um, step one, do the Freedom TX, which is the uh, Tango 2, and then the um, Crossfire second. Alrighty. Now the step we have missed is to make sure that we've got the latest TBS Agent X, and we also need to double check that we have the beta um, or beta firmware available. So to get the latest um, Agent if you've already got Agent X installed, you can go to the Settings tab and there's the Update TBS Agent X button there. Otherwise, uh, you can go to the website, check the description for the link to make sure we download the latest version. So for me, it's the Windows version here and then just install it like any program that you need to. And once you've installed it, just open it up. Good. Um, what we do need to check is that uh, we have the um, firmware available. So notice if this is unticked, and hit save, when I go into the Tango 2, it'll just show under firmware, kind of the current version, there's nothing else there. If you here and actually enable the, include the uh, beta firmware, beta, whatever, um, you'll see now you've got all these different options in here. In this particular case, we're going to be going to 1.14. It's gonna, all we have to do now is hit update. I guess we hit update again. We need to make sure that we wait for all of these checks to go across, so here we go. Okay, you can see the, sh the icon on the controller has changed to a downloading firmware. I think I heard in the live stream uh, them say that, you know, don't be confused by this bar going to 100% more than one time. Sometimes when engineers make software, um, the user interface may not be as logical as you expect. But let's see how it goes. See whether 100% means 100% or 100% means this step. Looks like it's just this step, so do not unplug. Okay, the control has restarted itself. Now this part I think Trappy said took 75 seconds or something, so I don't have a stopwatch unfortunately, but we just let's just count, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oop, it's done. Verifying complete. Done. Okay, well. That's good. So we go back here into the steps. You notice we've got the TBS Tango over here, 1.14, and we need to do the Tango 2 Crossfire here. Firmware. I'm going to update this to the latest one here, and let's go for it. While that's going, I'm going to grab a, ba grab a battery and a quad, and I'm going to use um, that quad as a bit of a test to make sure that when I turn this controller on, Multibind still works. It connects to that uh, control, that quad, sorry, and the firmware updates. So let's grab that quad and a battery. Again, don't be confused. Make sure you wait.
Maybe this is the one that Trappy said was 75 seconds. Okay, that's good. So we've updated the controller, firmware, SD card contents, and the um, transmitter. Now we actually have to connect uh, the transmitter to our quads to update the receiver. The way that the TBS does is that it pushes out from the, um, the transmitter to the receiver. And I just need to quickly check how you're supposed to do that because I've had a hit and miss before. So let's have a quick look. I need to press the bind button on the receiver, just the transmitter need to initiate the binding process. Okay, so we agreed that the correct setup was gonna to be to have the two, the drone, the controller on, and then we're gonna plug in the drone, and then we're gonna just go to bind. That's, that's what we agreed is the right process. So there's my smoke stopper. There's my battery, which is not fully powered. It's probably gonna die. Now in this particular drone, the um, receiver's in the back there. So I'm just gonna rejig our little camera position here. There's bloody grass in the motor, how embarrassing. See the red light at the back there? That one there is our receiver. So on the controller, I'm going to menu once, Crossfire menu. Down to bind. And hopefully that starts flashing, which it does. This is the correct process. Very excited. And then it says, do I want to update? And I say, yes, I do, by pressing the wheel again. And then we go through. This is exciting. This is how it's supposed to be. So I've only got that one little troublesome drone, which I probably did it in the wrong order. I can hear the telemetry coming through, so I know it's working. Okay. Good. Great. Next drone. Okay, so I know it's rough. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you found it useful. Quick overview of what we did. We updated the firmware uh, on the controller. First, we backed up the SD card, saved the settings, updated the SD card, restored our settings, updated the uh, firmware on the controller, then upgraded the micro uh, transmitter and then we bound it to our quads and updated our receivers so all in all um, it was a journey for me as well I know the video is very rough I apologize for that but I just wanted to create it because I thought other people might be struggling and just be seeing someone do it and having a bit of visuals might might help the process all right thanks and if you enjoy stuff like this let me know subscribe to my youtube and if you want me to make any other step-by-steps let me know uh, and if you hate it also let me know and I'll, I might have, if I have the time, I might uh, recreate it and make it look pretty. End card area. What is this other video or that video or click that face and subscribe or just maybe wait and then something else will play. Take that risk. I dare you.